and welcome back to For I Have Sinned. My name is Jess, and if you are watching on YouTube, you will see that there is no video recording. It's just a photo of the case I'm covering today. And also, Lauren is not with us for this episode. She had some personal business to attend to, um, so that's why we haven't been recording for the past few weeks. But we're back now, and I just thought I'd post something up just to, you know keep you guys entertained and I'm not uh, doing video because frankly I look like a haggard mess so I don't want to show you guys how disgusting I look <laughs> um, but if you are watching us on YouTube please subscribe like the video uh, hit the notification bell you know support us all right so today I am doing a local lunatics episode and this is about Rigoberto Lopez, the A-Train Ripper. Now, this just happened last month. Uh, on Friday, February 12th, a homeless man boarded the A-Train that heads towards Manhattan. His name is Rigoberto Lopez. He's 21 years old. He's been arrested four times, including for the assault of his own father. Lopez has a history of mental illness. His last known residency was a motel shelter in Brooklyn. After Lopez boarded the A-Train, a 14-hour a murder spree followed. At 11.30 a.m., a 67-year-old a man was stabbed as he pushed his walker along the southbound platform at the 181st Street Station in Washington Heights. Lopez shouted, I'm going to murder you, according to the victim, who was stabbed in the right knee and left buttocks. He did require surgery, and he was in critical condition, but ultimately he survived. This attack was primarily believed to be connected to three subsequent attacks. Twelve hours later, at 11.29 p.m., a man was found stabbed to death but still slumped in his seat at the A-Train's Mott Avenue station in Far Rockaway. That's in Queens for uh, anybody who's not familiar with New York. Um, he was stabbed in the neck and torso, and he was pronounced dead at the scene. At 1.15 a.m. on Saturday... A 44-year-old woman was found dead, sprawled on the floor in a pool of blood under her subway seat inside the A-Train at the 207th Street Station in Inwood. She was stabbed throughout her entire body. At 1.28 a.m., a 43-year-old man was stabbed as he slept on a stairwell at the A-Train station at West 181st Street. He was able to get to a bank on West W. On West W 81st Street, but collapsed before entering the vestibule. He was taken to the hospital and treated for four puncture wounds to his back and, in, and is in stable condition. The 44 year old woman was declared dead at New York Presbyterian Allen Hospital. Um, also, all of these victims were actually homeless as well. It was reported that this was the worst subway stabbing spree since 2006 when a homeless serial slasher attacked and injured four people on a 13-hour rampage on trains in Harlem and Rockefeller Center. All victims did survive. This was also the, ma the worst mass violence against the homeless since 2019 when four homeless men were bludgeoned to death in their sleep one night in Chinatown. Commuters at the A-Train's Far Rockaway Mott Avenue station called for stepped-up security measures, suggesting increased patrols and even metal detectors. Lopez, 21, was caught at 6.15 p.m. on Saturday the 13th at West 186th Street and Audubon Avenue in Washington Heights after hundreds of cops were deployed to keep the public safe. Lopez confessed to all four unprovoked attacks. He was charged with murder and attempted murder. NYPD Deputy Chief Brian McGee stated they were all unprovoked attacks and the victims didn't initiate anything. Police said that Lopez has spent time in at least one hospital psychiatric ward. Before the spree, Lopez was last arrested and last arrested in October 2020 when he was spotted walking around Washington Heights with a long kitchen knife. Cops found 48 bags of coke on him. Lopez's sister, Lisbeth Atwood, who's 27, said he visited her home in Washington Heights early Friday morning before the rampage began. She says he used her phone to call his lawyer in regards to his pending cases and seemed fine but frustrated. 
Lopez came from the Dominican Republic in 2013, living with his family in Harlem, then moved to an apartment in the Bronx with his mother and brothers. He was soon kicked out due to his bizarre, obsessive behavior. When Lopez was finally tracked down after the attacks, he was identified from surveillance video and was wearing the same clothes. Now, there's not much more information than this. Hopefully more will come out soon, and I'll update you guys in future episodes. Um, but this is terrifying. You know, I was talking to Lauren about this, and we've both taken that train, and it kind of, if I remember correctly, it kind of goes to basically the middle of nowhere, I, I think. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think so. I think it goes like pretty far out there's you know it's the end of the line and it's yeah I, I'm pretty sure that's the train but just imagine being on stuck in a subway train and yeah usually stops are only a few minutes apart but if this was towards the end of the line you know trains empty if you're you're stuck in this this little Confi it's not that confined, but little area, and there's a guy running around stabbing people. I could not imagine how terrifying that would be. That, for me, that's one of the scarier things that I can think of. Just being stuck somewhere, uh, not being able to escape with, you know, a madman with you. <laughs> oh, that it that like it gives me chills. It actually gives me chills. Um, like I said, hopefully there, there will be more updates as far as, you know, when there, him going to court, um, maybe, you know, p victims, families speaking out. But this is really all I got so far. And I did this research almost a, mm, a couple of days ago. So it's been almost a month. There's not too much more. Um, you know, I it comes to getting better security uh, for the subways. Oh, God, I just I can't stop thinking about I can't stop thinking about being stuck on a train with it with this guy. You know, I feel bad if he was mentally ill. Um, I'm hoping more of about his background will come out as well. But who knows? Just so scary. And I feel so terrible for the victims. Um, I want to know why they were all homeless. If there were maybe people he knew on the street or what. But apparently he also had... Um, I think I, I said this in the uh, during my... Let's see. Yeah, he, so he was found with 48 bags of coke on him. So maybe it had something to do with drugs he was planning to sell or, or, you know, maybe people owed him money or something like that. I don't know. But it's just, it's really terrifying. It's really sad. It's, I, uh, it, it's been, I don't know why, but it's just, it's been freaking me out so much lately. I guess just because I used to take the subway a lot and when I lived in Brooklyn, Oh, I don't I don't like it. But like I said, this was going to be a short episode and I feel so awkward doing solo episodes, but we did want to get something up. So we will be recording this weekend. So stay tuned for that. And I believe it is Lauren's turn. So I'm excited for her episode. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Patreon. I actually just put up some drawings that killers uh made behind bars and they're pretty fascinating and creepy but yeah so join us on patreon subscribe to us wherever we are spotify itunes uh stitcher and we're on soundcloud and yeah just keep supporting us we've had kind of a rough month and uh, as i'm sure a lot of people have but you know you love us, so come on. All right, well, you know, stay safe, wash your hands, don't kill your family, don't go on a murder spree on the subway, and we will talk to you soon. Bye, sinners. <laughs>